so uh, we want to kind of jump into some of the categories here. So, um, you know, one of the things that we want to touch on every week is something that we that we try to do within our marriage that helps just can continue to generate closeness that's very intentional, right? So Sarah posted a reel a couple weeks back about something that we do at parties. Oh, yes. So when we're at parties, I don't know if we ever even had a conversation about this. I don't, I can't even remember the genesis of it. But we go up to each other just randomly throughout the night and just kind of, you know, touch each other's arm, put our arm around each other, give each other a hug, give each other a kiss, just kind of like, you doing okay? Well, or sometimes we don't even say anything. It's just kind of like letting we letting the other person know that you're there. That's right. it, it can be it can be chaotic, especially with four kids, and you're trying to like manage them. And sometimes one of us is visiting while the other one's kind of corralling, and other times we're both off visiting and the kids are just feral. Right. Um, but it's just nice to like check in and be like, you know, you doing okay? Like you don't know what your spouse is maybe saying to somebody or somebody saying to them, like what conversations they might be having that might be you know, bothering them or just, I don't know. It's just nice to touch base, right? Like, yeah. Especially when we have two big families. Yes. Like, we, we have two very big families and yeah. So when we get together on either side, it's like a lot of engagement yeah. and a lot of activity and a lot of kind of just insanity taking place. Right. So oftentimes what will happen is like one of us will end up, kind of watching the kids or trying to keep one of the kids from, you know, getting into something they shouldn't get into. In the street or, or whatever. Yeah, right. So, so yeah, so it's nice, it's nice when we're on, uh-oh, it's nice when we're on my side to, you know, make sure that Sarah's doing okay and it's nice when we're on Sarah's side to make sure that, that I'm doing okay. So oftentimes we'll just make sure that we go up to each other and give each other a little, you know, a little encouragement. Re- reassuring. And, and reassurance. little uh, pat and... That's or right. a little hug or just, I don't know, hand squeeze, whatever right. it might be. That's right. It's, it's very quick. Just very quick. That's right. Um, all right. So that's kind of our weekly weekly marriage hack. Here's an example of banter. And, <laughs> you know, banter and bliss. What do you want to call it? I don't know why there are six <laughs> people in this house and five of them leave every cabinet door open that they that they open in the kitchen. I'll walk into the kitchen and there will be seven do- like cabinets open. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. I Sarah's I, like, no, not me. I never. I literally, he said that, and I was like, I don't do. <laughs> and sure enough, I was just paying attention today. <laughs> today, and sure enough, I left multiple cabinet doors at different times of the day. Yeah, just right. Wide open. I, I'm like, I don't remember. And listen, it's not that big a deal, but it just. Oh, but it's hilarious because I totally was like, oh, it's not me. <laughs> it's not yeah, right. Me. It just irks me to walk into the kitchen and for there to be six cabinets open. Like I'm like, Ugh. now the other side of it is the kids will hang on the cabinet doors and That's break true. them off. I, and I now don't we do have that. the same problem that I'm frustrated about with the pranks. Now we got to fix the cabinet. That's right. That's again, that's frustrating. But there's a perfect example of like Sarah doing something that drives me up a wall, but us laughing about it. Yes, kind of like when you're picking a parking spot. Except we don't laugh about it. <laughs> no, we don't laugh about that. Here's here's the thing too. Okay. I don't understand why parking a hundred feet closer to the building is that big of a difference. Well, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Here's, we, women are trained to like park as close as we can under a light so we don't get you Okay, know, right. So that's legit. Scott likes to park on the If it's two PM in the afternoon, <laughs> who cares where the lights are? That's my point. Well, Here's then you're the other closer, more people are like going in and out. You don't want to be like out on the outskirts. You don't want to be that sheep way out there. If I'm parking, I'm with you though. <laughs> you don't have to be a sheep okay, in the outskirts but... or whatever you said. <laughs> I'm with wolves you. Will come get you. Yeah, right. No, I also like I, I think in me I'm used to just like Parking as close as I can. I'm like corralling children usually with me too. It's just a convenience thing. Why do you want to park all the way out there? Right. So I'll tell well, you. Well, here we go. Here Here's we go. an example of the, our our, our this banter. This is the reason why I park. Why? The Exercise. Find, no. Yes. But not only. <laughs> the second I find a spot and I park in it, I can get out of the car and walk into the building. If the purpose is to save time by parking closer but you waste three more minutes driving around looking for a closer parking spot, then you're not saving any time. <laughs> That's you can right. also, you can also you get go. to your car faster after you're done I, doing I would, whatever I would you're doing. Argue, I would argue that the time lost on the park, the initial park counterbalances the Listen, when it's cold, saved. okay, 
we also don't wear coats so you do I don't usually wear coats and the kids don't usually wear coats unless we're like going to be playing outside for a long period not of time. my decision so we like to just kind of shuffle in and out real quick right whatever the shuffling in and out also is an enigma to me but neither here nor there <laughs> there you go there's a perfect example. there you go That's this a- has been banter and bliss with the suitors <laughs> um all right next category individual passion so individual passion shared cheer supporting each other's hobbies so we can hit this in about 60 seconds what type of hobby are have you found yourself interested in recently aside from buying christmas presents that your husband has to assemble for the family <laughs> what's your other what other hobbies do you have? <laughs> that's not recent that's been that's ongoing. There you go. That's an ongoing. I, I went to ikea i think those are the worst scott oh, worst scott worst words scott hears out of my mouth i went to ikea because he knows it's just gonna be like assembling something which isn't that big a deal but He's much it better at it than like, I am. It basically is like a, here's a three-hour project. Here's there. the thing. I will open a box and sit there, and I'll be like, I can't I can't do the following the instructions. And then I'll be like, yeah. Scott, can you help me? And I've done absolutely nothing but unwrap everything. But anyways, <laughs> passions. Wait, what was, the, what was the question? Individual passions, shared cheers. Okay. Supporting each other's hobbies. Um, Scott has really gotten me into growing my Instagram account and making reels, which I, as a photographer was very like, oh, I don't want to do reels. But now I'm doing them, and he's kind of been spurring me on. Yeah, right. To... You were doing them, I was just... but you weren't like you weren't like strategically doing them. Yes, right? so he's gotten me into the strategic, re- strategic reel making. Right. Um, so that's been my latest, and like collaborating with companies and brands and stuff like that. Yeah, right. That's so been a lot of fun. About four months ago or, or whatever, I... You know, I'm in digital marketing already. It's what I do for a living and um, just decided that I was going to start trying to learn a little bit more about social media marketing and some stuff started to click for me. So I started to share some with her and she started to implement it and she's had three reels go pretty super viral, which is fun. We're not, I'm not bragging about that, but it's, it's just been fun for her to say, you know, like, you know, wake up in the morning and be like, I got a thousand new followers while I was sleeping. Like, that's kind of cool. So yeah, so that's kind of how we're supporting your hobby. Um, my hobby's a little harder to support. This you know <laughs> flavor of the week hobby. So <laughs> you got to understand that I've gotten in and out of many hobbies since we've been married. Yep. And and they kind of come in cycles, right? So I've always video gamed, which you know is pretty non respectable hobby to be into. Oh, you haven't been doing man. it as much lately. Right. I've been focusing on some other stuff, but it comes in waves, right? So about. A year and a month ago or so, we got our son a bunch of football cards for, for his birthday in November, and his father, <laughs> who, shall remain, who shall remain nameless, became obsessed with collecting football cards. So I've been I've been kind of getting you know in and out of football cards over the last you know twelve thirteen months or so, um, which again sounds just as pointless as listen there are worse there are worse hobbies so there are worse hobbies. i just i just ride the wave and eventually he'll get tired of it yeah right so sarah's done a good job of supporting that passion by not nuking me every time listen there are lots of packages that come in the mail so that makes it exciting that's At least true it's better than no mail that's true or bills it's basically like getting getting a present almost every day right it, except it says scott Suter on it never which is a nice change of pace <laughs> isn't it <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the Amazon yeah. truck drives by. I'm like, didn't I order hey, something? Didn't I? Yeah, right, right. It's a good change of pace <laughs> from the last couple of years. Like, wait, so, flag them down. Oh, wait, never mind. I didn't yeah, order anything. This has been individual passions and shared cheers. That's how we support each other's hobbies. So, yes. um, all right. So, celebrating love languages are, is our next category. So, Sarah and I have different love languages. Um, would you like to share yours? Yeah. Um, I think my top one would be acts of service. I keep trying to figure out what the second main one is. I feel like it's quality time. Would you agree with that? Because uh, yeah, I think that one of the easiest ways, and we did the five love, love languages book. Wow, I'm like tripping over my words. Five love languages book. Um, it talks about how when your love language isn't being met, a lot of times that's like a source of conflict. So like for me, it's acts of service. So if Scott is not helping, that's when I kind of start like reacting. And I think that's kind of how we figured out that mine was actually acts of service over some of the other ones and yeah. stuff like that. But um, yeah, acts of service, quality time, quality time. I feel like with physical touch, I'm, I, 
Yeah. I'm a pretty high. That physical touch is pretty high up there. Yeah. I mean, we, we, you know, we want to use this podcast as a platform to obviously be honest um, and, and transparent. Um, we believe very strongly that physical intimacy is a form of communication within marriage, that it's an important form of communication within marriage, that, you know, there are times where one partner is not in the mood, the other partner is, the other partner's not in the mood, the first partner is, neither partner is in the mood, both partners are in the mood. Like, you find yourselves in these periods of, you know, like, ebbs and flows. Um, but, you know, just like with anything within marriage, it's important to do the important things and, and to fulfill certain responsibilities. And so what we found is that when our physical intimacy is lacking, like, it, we our communication breaks down and our tendency to be short fused with each other or frustrated with the kids or whatever can can grow right mm -hmm. and so we believe that um i think that physical touch is an important element in our love in our love story and our marriage in general so i would i would say that for those reasons physical touch is one of the most important love languages for both of us mm -hmm. we both communicate and receive love through physical touch not always sexuality but frequently mm -hmm. uh sometimes it's you know a touch point during a party where we just come up and give each other a hug sometimes it's you know, I'm having a breakdown or Sarah's having a breakdown and, you know, she walks up to me and puts her hand on my shoulder and I put my hand on her, her shoulder, something along those lines. So Or a hug that I make last. Yeah. Sarah's, Sarah's really big on these like 45 second hugs. <laughs> and that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Except when, when I'm in the middle of trying to do something and she walks in and gives me a 45 second hug and I'm like... Okay, I was trying to put this thing away or go do this <laughs> thing. I was trying to close the cabinets. <laughs> I can't. I tried to me. assemble this IKEA cabinet for you. I just tried so, to thank you. Anyways, those are important moments, but you know, <laughs> I can struggle sometimes to fulfill that need. But um, for me, I've always said that gift giving is a love language of mine, um, both in receiving and getting, uh, and it's not so much like getting giving, for other people, like re receiving, receiving yourself for myself and, and giving, giving to yes, others. Yes. That's right. The, and, and I'll tell you why the, the reason I think that is because when I know that I'm at like odds with somebody, my first, my first kind of like instinct is to be like, let me get them a gift card. Let me get them something I know that would mean something to them. Um, and that's why I think it's one of my primary love languages. I'm going to give you, I'm going to, I'm going to show generosity to you through a substance, right? Through something that I can, that I can gift to you. Um, one of the things that's misunderstood, I think, about gift giving is the value of the gift. Yes, yes. I and was so say that. I think a lot of people think like, oh, gift giving, I got to get somebody this big elaborate. It's like, no, no, no. The importance is in the thought and the sentiment, mm -hmm. right? If you get me a $5 mug... It's going to be just as meaningful to me as if you got me some big, you know, grand thing that I know I, that you know I really wanted, right? Mm -hmm. It's the it's the sentiment, it's the gesture that yeah. that I think matters. I think and, that took a while for me to figure that out. Um, but it could just be as simple as I'm at Kroger and I see a snack he likes or the cold brew he likes or whatever, and just picking it up and bringing it home. I didn't realize it was that simple. I sure. thought I had to buy him like. A laptop or something. Yeah. <laughs> I have like 14 laptops I haven't even opened just to get buy them. No, I thought it had to be like these big things where it's like, here's this, you know, I spent a hundred dollars, here's a TV, here's a, yeah. I didn't realize it could just be like, it's more the act of giving you something, just and, something small. And I think small. That, that perspective is important for people to understand because like when it is an expensive gift, there can be like resentment about like, yeah, of course, you know, of course he's in a good mood. I bought him a new flat screen. T the importance is to understand that, like, the value of the gift means nothing. Literally, it means nothing to the person you're gifting it. Mm -hmm. You know, like, the kids draw me pictures, like, Dad, this is a picture of us doing whatever. It's like the gift of them thinking about me and creating something for me is just as important and meaningful to me as the cold brew that you buy me, which is just as important and meaningful to me as, you know, whatever you know, all this equipment that we bought for the podcast, right? We kind of gifted it to each other. So what's a way, you know, I'm kind of springing this on you, but what's a way that you feel like I communicated in your love language, this 
this past week? Um, it was Christmas this past week. And the house just kind of gets flipped upside down during Christmas. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just all the new toys, all the decorations. I don't even know what it is. But Scott helped me get this house clean top to bottom. And he gave me time to clean, too. I think that um, sometimes the act of service of taking the kids while I can go do something by myself is huge. It might An act of service might be him like actually physically cleaning something, but it could also be like him taking the kids so that I can focus and get things the way I want them to. And that was huge because I've been walking around the house like, there's no clutter anywhere because he helped. He helped me clean. <laughs> he helped me clean and he helped watch the kids so I could clean even more. So yeah. giving me that time. So that was huge. Yeah. Um, for me, I think, you know, it's as simple as picking up a couple jugs of cold brew yeah. at the at the store for me. And again, it just is like drive 10 minutes and pay $6 for a Starbucks cold brew or there's cold brew in the fridge. And that like it's meaningful because I don't have to go spend that extra money, go for that drive. Um, but then also it's like, hey, Sarah doesn't drink coffee. So there's only one person who this cold brew could be for. There you go. It's not our four-year-old Zion. <laughs> so <laughs> kids got a, enough insanity in them already. So. All right, one final category here before we, um, you know, before we wrap up. So, reflect uh, maintaining passion tips for a thriving marriage amidst parenthood. So, reflect this week. Um, what specific actions or attitudes helped us keep the passion alive amidst demands of life and parenting? I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna phrase it differently. I'm actually gonna say, how did we communicate this week amidst the insanity of the holidays, the insanity of the children? You know, at what points did we slow down, in your opinion, did we slow down and make sure that we were kind of communicating at, you know, at a higher level? I'll go first, actually. It gives you a little more time to think. Okay. About. Um, so, again, the holidays are always supercharged with insanity and, and frustration, and there's a million reasons to be mad at each other. We got <laughs> sick for the 10 hundredth year in a row. Right around right, Christmas. <laughs> literally every year Christmas time we all get sick. Um so there just was a lot of there was a lot of, you know, potential for frustration, potential for, you know, people to, to kind of blow up. Um in the midst of us being sick, I took a few days off of work so that I could kind of watch the kids while Sarah recovered and then vice versa, Sarah again, gave me the time that I needed to recover during, you know, when I wasn't, when I wasn't feeling well. Um, there were moments in there where you're obviously frustrated because the kids are bouncing off the walls or they're insane. And, you know, like they need their mom, but she's sick. And then they need their dad or their mom needs their dad. And he's sick, right? <laughs> so during that time, I think we, it was important for us to communicate what we needed mm -hmm. and how we needed to recover. Also, there was some additional turbulence and, I think that we just did a very good job of like maintaining our composure, not not allowing ourselves to get like too far beyond the point of like, okay, we are like rationally communicating here, right? Like the energy and the emotions were, were high, but we were still rationally communicating with each other and, mm -hmm. and saying things that we knew could potentially sound hurtful, but being intentionally say, I don't mean this in a hurtful way. I'm not trying to be offensive or anything like that. Um, and again, I, it takes years to get to that point, and mm -hmm. we're certainly not perfect, but mm -hmm. understanding how, like, in that moment, the stakes are very high. We need to communicate the right way with the right tone, the right message, and make sure that it's received appropriately as well. Yeah. So I think it was really important how we communicated with each other during that specific kind of week of, of the holidays. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so Scott's brother was brother and wife and, well brother and his brother's wife and their daughter were in town from England, um, which is awesome. We hadn't seen them in forever, but it meant a lot of time with Scott being gone in the evenings, um, just visiting and stuff like that. And I think it was just important to me when he realized that he was gone a lot and when he had available time, we like spent time together just watching a movie or just 
hanging out together in the den. <laughs> Our den is right here. So many evenings we just go in there and hang out. Sometimes we'll play a game. Sometimes we'll just talk. I don't know. But that intentional time. And then when he would come home late, sometimes after being out with his brother, just like him coming into bed and like, like cuddling with me, I'm like, oh, he's back. Like, I don't know. It just, even though he's been gone and I know like this was just for a short time, it was just nice to have that like communication of like, I'm here. I'm still here. Like giving me the little cuddles and then falling asleep together, all cuddled up like that. I don't know. That just means a lot to me. So there's like the actual communication of like talking to each other and then the actual like physical communication and nonverbal stuff that just helps. I don't know. In the chaos, it's just these little moments. Because if you don't do that, I feel like a lot of times things can build up in your head and you can start being like, well, he's been gone every night, you know, hanging out with his family. But like to be like to realize that this was an important week for him. And to give him that time and then him to respond with like, you know, I'm still here. I don't know. It just, yeah. it means a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And that was important to me that, that you let me go do that and that we, you know, maintained a connection. You know, I, <clears throat> usually if we go multiple days without having that time, again, that quality time, yeah. which starts, you know, the pressure starts to build a little bit. So, um, which I think is also part of the date night thing where it's like, even though we have sometimes these like crazy weeks, we know we have Tuesday where we'll have no kids for at least an hour. (laughs) Sometimes it's two hours. Sorry. Um, Where we can communicate and, and just spend that quality time together. So sorry, you were going to say something. Uh, No, I just basically, I just was going to say that um, I think it's, I think it's crucial to recognize that from both parties to recognize like, okay, I know that he's going to be gone, but also for me to recognize, okay, I know that I've been gone and mm-hmm. that she's, you know, she's been spending these evenings alone. I personally, like, love alone time. I don't. Cause, cause I, I literally... Can, like, vibe, watch a movie, play a video game, go to bed early, you know, like, I, 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 I kind of thrive it. on alone time, but Sarah... I hate it. I, like, the second he's gone and the kids are in bed, I'm, like, sad. Like I just is I like, can get you to log in for Halo or whatever. <laughs> like cue the like sad music like on any movie where like someone's like broken up with somebody. Obviously we didn't break up, but like it's just like, well this is boring. Like I would much ra- like, I know there were couples who were like at odds with each other when they kind of got trapped together in 2020 with like the lockdowns. But I was like, yes, it's a dream come <laughs> true for Sarah. That's right. I there was not a moment where I was like, I'm a little bit tired of hanging out with Scott. No, he, he, might have, he might have felt differently. No, no, but. no. So the difference, <laughs> right? So here's, for me, it's not, it's never that. I've never yeah, been like, fine. I've reached my limit with Sarah. Frankly, my favorite times are when it's just you and I on our anniversary trip or traveling mm-hmm. or doing something. Frankly, even when we're in the car and the kids are all quiet listening to a movie or oh, music yeah. or whatever, and we're just talking, it's like good to know that not only do I love my wife, but I actually really like my wife also. Yes, um, I like you too. That being said, <laughs> for me it's about it's about like the gear that i'm in right so like if i'm in work mode work gear and sarah comes in and wants to have a really intense conversation i need to downshift and stop what i'm doing to talk to her <laughs> and that doesn't always come across this is why i think i'm an eight right that doesn't always come across with the most like tenderness and gentleness so sometimes she's like are you listening to me do you, what did I just say? I'm like, <laughs> I just start, I'm sorry. Well, here's I'm the thing. I, I, I start saying things like I'll be talking to him and then I can realize, I realize he's not talking and I'll be like, and so then this monkey was in the basement and it was crawling and then he'll be like, I'm like, did you, yeah, right. were you listening? And, then I, and the answer was no, I wasn't. <laughs> so, I start saying crazy things. But again, like she's, she's I good understand. enough to realize, sorry, I hit the mic. She's good enough to recognize like. <laughs> that that's who I am. And, you know, early in her marriage, that baby would have been offensive to her. Now she realizes, like, okay, he's not purposely trying well, to... Well, I think I understand, too. Like, there's sometimes I'm trying to accomplish something, and you kind of come in and want to, like, talk. And I think just looking up from whatever I'm doing and saying to you, like, can I just finish this real quick? Because I do want to listen to what you're saying. Right, right. But I just, I'm kind of in the zone. And you do that to me, too. Like, we both do that to each other now. I think instead of just being, like, ignoring them... <laughs> I think it's important to just kind of stop them where they are. Like, I actually do want to listen to this. Can I just finish what I'm doing real quick so I can give you my full attention? That's right. 
Um, yeah, and again, that goes back to communication, right? So mm-hmm. just a way that we communicated well. Any final thoughts before we wrap up? No, just keep dating your spouse, communicating, loving yeah. each other, praying for each other. That's right. We're here to hopefully be an encouragement to everybody out there who's, you know, trying to maintain the, the excitement, the energy. So appreciate it, and we'll see you guys again soon.